<sighs> I woke up on Saturday morning and was disappointed. I consider myself friends with FTR. We have uh, had an opportunity to. So do I, by the way. Yeah, I like them. I mean, I talk to Dax on, on a pretty regular basis, somewhat regular basis. And I've been fortunate enough to help Dax and cash professionally. And, uh, that was my great honor and, and took a lot of pride in that and really appreciate their work. They're my favorite tag team. And it's not even a debate. Like I just love their old school look and feel. And I love their power and glory, uh, former finisher and who doesn't love the shatter machine. It's I like these guys and man, they were just all over you on a local interview. Uh, they were doing some, uh, local media with a local station, I suppose, to promote their collision show this past Saturday in Norfolk, Virginia. And there was a, a local interviewer there by the name of Jeff Snyder, who I have to admit I was not familiar with, but he's clearly a big wrestling fan and was thrilled to be talking to FTR and. Somehow, some way, my man, Eric Bischoff came up and I thought rather than us try to quote it and get it wrong, we should just play a clip. So I've got a few clips. We'll do uh, a clip from Dax here and then we'll let you <laughs> respond and then we'll do another clip. But I didn't want to get it out of context. If I've learned anything from working with you, it's that context is king. So rather than me misquote something. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage <laughs> and, and come here to this place. But also, you know, I, I don't think Tony Khan gets the credit that he deserves because he uh, afforded a lot of people, uh, a lot of jobs and a lot of income. I mean, even if you look outside of AEW, you got all these uh, old time uh, miserable podcasters like Eric Bischoff and, you know, some of the others uh, who are, who make a living just by going on, their podcasts and burying Tony and AEW when uh, they know that AEW is, is, is a place where business is thriving, um, where AEW is a place that is helping change professional wrestling for the positive. So not only did Tony give us, uh, give us and every uh, you know, hundreds of other people a living, um, he's afforded a living to some people who otherwise would be sitting miserable, bankrupt in their house. So we'll take a pause right there. A lot to unpack there. As I like to say, um, I did find it interesting that he came out and named you specifically and not another podcaster who uh, I know he's pals with who, uh, their entire format is often just breaking down the AEW show segment by segment. Whereas at least on 83 weeks, we're trying to draw some correlations between then and now your experience in WCW, what worked and what didn't work and applying it to the present product. Maybe that was lost in translation for Dax, but I want to give you a chance to respond because I did not like that comment at all. Well, either my skin has gotten so thick that I just don't react to things the way I used to, or maybe you just get wiser with age and, and having kind of been there when I was younger, um, kind of where Dax is right now. I, so I kind of get it, you know. I mean, let's. Where is Dax in, in his career? He's got to say these things. He's out there promoting his company. He's defending his company. His boss made a complete jackass of himself on social media during the week previous to this appearance he made. So I get it because what else is Dax going to do? If he doesn't have a gig in AEW. And I don't mean that as a shot because I, I like him and I, I like the tag team like you do for the same reasons. But I don't know if going back to WWE is an option. Maybe it is. You know, we've seen crazier things, right? I don't know that the, the situation where Dax left and how he left it and if he had heat or didn't have heat or, or I don't know any of that stuff. Maybe there's a chance he could go back, but eh, I think those odds are probably remote at this point. Um, so what's he got? You know, he's got the gig he's got. And and I don't disagree. Tony Khan is, you know, he's put a lot of money in a lot of talent's pockets. I know people personally who are making more money who have been in the business for longer than I have and are making more money than they ever have. Yes. So, so and you know that. I'm not exaggerating anything here. Yes. 
You don't hear anybody in AEW complaining about their paychecks. <laughs> Quite the opposite. And, and sure, that's great for talent. That's great for those individuals. And, and I'm happy for them. Just like I'm happy for somebody that wins the lottery. You know, I don't want to see anybody not get what they can get out there in the marketplace. Right. So let's dispel that, you know, because I, I agree with that. That's, I get that. It's a wonderful thing for humanity. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's good for the business. What Tony Khan has been doing and, and some of the presentations that we've seen out of, out of AEW is not better for the business. Because it's turning off advertisers, it's turning off his own viewers. The, the audience is is deteriorating. It's not growing. And you can talk about yeah, but most people are watching TV and, and go back to that trope all you want. Is it a fact? Sure. Is it as an excuse? Probably not. WWE is growing in the same environment. Why isn't AEW? It's because of lack of story. It's because of lack of character development. It's because of lack of vision. And it's because a lot of the chaos that's going on behind the scenes. Now, as far as me being old and bitter and relying upon my commentary here on 83 Weeks to stay out of bankruptcy, and presumably that's the reason why, you know, Dax is so offended by something that I said or responded to. Tony Khan on social media that that upset him so badly. It didn't upset him a couple of years ago. Didn't upset him at this time last year. I've been, I've been very vocal and, and my criticism of AEW and Tony Khan for a couple of years now, this is going back for at least two years, probably two and a half. It's not new, but a little over a year ago, Dax is putting it over. He loved it. Here it is right now looking for oh less than a year ago yeah less than a year ago so dax posts on january 15th of the last year less than a year ago very short notice but we're we're going to record ftr with dax harwood in about an hour starting now we're going to do a non-wrestling question of the week and i responded in support because i'm that way you know, yeah. this podcasting world is a giant pie and there's enough room in it for everybody. So yeah. I like to support the people that I know and even yes. people I don't know trying to break into the business. So I responded very kindly to encourage some of my listeners to sample Dax's show. Looking forward to it. Continued success. And Dax re responded less than a year ago. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Big fan of 83 Weeks. Weekly download on my phone. I steal a lot of your podcast formulas. But now all of a sudden, when I'm doing the same thing that I was doing, I've been doing for the last two years, he's so offended by it that he, he, he talks about me going into bankruptcy if it were not for the silliness that's a going on in TNA or excuse me, in AEW and my ability to, to have fun with it on social media. Let's just get the elephant out of the room. I wrote a book called grateful. I talked a lot about having to file chapter 11 bankruptcy. And this isn't a financial industry course, but because that's the, kind of there, right? So I, I want to address it. I'm not going to go into detail about the differences between chapter seven, Chapter 11, Chapter 13, because they're all different. Chapter 11 is a business bankruptcy, primarily. It doesn't allow me to walk away from my debts. I ended up filing a Chapter 11 bankruptcy back in 2017. I've talked on this show at length about the reasons that led up to it. Basically, me trans transitioning out of the television business. I went from making close to seven figures a year, and I took it about an 80% cut and pay over the course of 24 months. And then I had the state of California come knocking on my door and say, Hey, I know you thought you paid all your taxes, but we realize we can find a different way to tax you on business that took place out of state simply because you have a mailbox in California. That was kind of a big hit. None of that really matters to protect my home. This home is my legacy. I built this home in 1998 because I really, really wanted to, provide a place of stability in any situation for my family 
to have a beautiful home in a beautiful part of the country from people where people from all over the world come here to visit. It's that beautiful. And I wanted to be able to leave this legacy to my children to enjoy it for the very same reasons. And when it got to the point where that legacy, this property, this home was at risk, I made a business decision to reorganize my debt, not walk away from it, not, not fulfill my obligations to it, simply to reorganize it. And that's what a chapter 11 is. Now, when I filed that chapter 11, this is back in 2017, you go through that process. And at the end of it, the court says, okay, you're going to pay back 100% of this debt. Yep. And you have, in my case, five years to do it. I did it in three. I have a seven figure net worth. I have a very healthy credit score. I'm in really good shape as a result of being able to do some smart things with some help from some really smart people. So that was the context of the bankruptcy that I talked about in the book. So it's not a shot at me. I'm, it is a shot. Like I said, it's in the book, right? You weren't hiding it, but I mean, he made it personal in my, in my view when he said that. And I thought, man, I got to throw the flag on that. Um, and to be clear, this podcast was hugely successful financially before AEW was even a thing. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because like, like you see the numbers on, better than I do. <laughs> our success on 83, people who listen to this show know we have ads. Well, guess why we have ads? And I hear the complaints sometimes why we have so many ads that we started adfreeshows.com because it's successful, because people listen, because we have a smart audience who's engaged who listen. And by the way, Dax is among them. He's admitted that he listens and stole from the podcast. 